Madam Helene? No, Mr. Kramer, your wife left half hour ago. Uh, I, I wish to inquire about the treatment. Over there at the other desk. Thank you. Will Mrs. Higginbottom be ready soon? Just a moment, please. Mr. Higginbottom for Mrs. Higginbottom. Thank you. She'll be ready in just a few moments. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Stratton, but we can't take you till next Thursday. Will you please be seated? Yes, and I'd advise a facial for those chins, you know. Very well, 1.30. Madam Helene? No, I'm Miss Mason. I can't disturb Madam Helene just now, but I can tell you all about our course. We use an electrical cabinet to open your pores. Then we place you upon a table where we manipulate the fat, first applying a strong solution, so that when the fat cells break down under treatment, the astringent tightens the skin, preventing flabbiness. Then you should have face, neck, and chin treatments to restore youthful contours. Well, how much will all of those treatments be? Only $150 in advance. Have you a pen? I'll make you out a check. George Horton. I've heard so much about the wonderful things you've done for other women. I've been meaning to come to you for a long time, but I've been in such delicate health that I've sort of let myself go. You're still a very attractive woman, Mrs. Horton, but decidedly overweight. However, we can correct that if you'll only cooperate with us. I'll do anything. Anything you say. You see, my husband, well, he used to be so attentive. But recently, he's cold, positively cold. Bessie, yes. will you take Mrs. Horton to her treatment room? Oh, dear, I don't think we have room. We'll make room. And after your treatment, we'll discuss your diet. Must I diet, too? Why, I eat so little, just like a bird. Eggs and black coffee for breakfast, salad, crackers, and tea for lunch, fish, fresh vegetables, fruit, and coffee for dinner. How many eggs do you have for breakfast, Mrs. Horton? The maid generally scrambles five. Five? Really, Mrs. Horton, that'll have to stop. But I can. I get so famished that it makes me dizzy. We can't help you if you won't cooperate. Oh, I'll cooperate. Truly, I will. Why, I'd do anything for a figure like yours. That's more like it. Now, you go along with Betsy and she'll take good care of it. All right, I will. Eats like a bird. A peck at a time. Oh, good morning, Madam Helene. Good morning, Mrs. Clark. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning, Mrs. Fairweather. Oh, dear, what torture we poor women have to endure to hold our husbands. 
Why, only yesterday I told Jim that men certainly have it easy. Nothing to do all day but sit around and dictate to a little snip of a stenographer and see how I have to suffer. Oh, hello, Helene. Hello. Wasn't that Mr. George Horton I saw in the corridor? Yes, it was. Well, before I let myself go like that. <laughs> I see by your car that you've gained a pound this week, Mrs. Richards. Are you still dieting? Oh, my dear, I have a new cook and she makes such marvelous pies. Pie? See that she has ten minutes long in the steam room, Maud. Why, I've been steamed so much now, I feel like a suet pudding. I'm late, I know I'm late, but don't scold me, don't scold me. I had to exercise friends and I walked ten whole blocks. Well, that's good for you, Madame Renault. But what happened to your Pekingese? Ramon made me trade him for Prince. He thought I'd look smaller alongside of him. And I know I've lost pounds and pounds exercising him. <gasps> Why, Helene, I thought... Prince, you naughty dog, giving me such a scare. Go get your things off, Maud. It'll take you in a little while. Prince, you certainly gave me an awful scare. You had me believing it. Why? Two, touch the floor. Some ladies, touch the floor now. One, two, touch the floor. One, two, touch the floor. One, two, touch the floor. Some ladies, touch the floor now. One, two, touch the floor. Mrs. Conley, how many times have I told you alcohol is very fattening? But I feel scrumptious. I feel like a million dollars that want to take a nap. I'll go. Continue your exercise, Get someone to help you carry her to a shower room. Yes, madam. Hello. What a life. What's the matter? You're thundering herd getting you down again? Oh, I do get fed up everlastingly trying to carve figures out of fat and being forced to listen to their silly scandals and malicious gossip. You should worry as long as they have fat bankrolls. You know, you're not doing so badly for a little girl that didn't know where her next meal was coming from five slim years ago. Oh, I'm making money all right, but I want to do more than that. I want to help women stay fit and look their best. One way of keeping their husbands home nice. But I get so discouraged when they won't even try to help themselves. Oh, don't let us throw you if these big apple dumplings are too dumb to listen to you. You're doing a noble work, gal. I look, me. I wouldn't have got the first date in this place without you, and I'm not forgetting that. Cooey. I'm not forgetting that you pulled me out of the back line of a chorus to give me a job and an interest in the place after we got going. What do you say we quit patting each other on the back and get to work? All right. What's on the list? Well, there's an editor of a beauty magazine wants to pay you a thousand dollars for an article on why blondes paid sooner than brunettes. Do they? For a thousand bucks, I'll say they do. <laughs> I'll dictate that tomorrow. So let me write that one for you. Hello, Terry. How are the goddesses of the bath? We're busy. Scram. What? Before I get my daily tidbits of gossip for the little old column? Not a chance. You're wasting your time today, Terry. We're having a bit of news. Oh, don't give me that. Why, well, this scandal house of yours is worth a story a day. That's why I uh, spend so much time around here. Hmm. I thought Maisie had something to do with that. Her? They may be right. Fact is, I, I might get around to marrying the gal if you ever shut up shop. I sure miss this place. I well, say, this is one of the sights of New York. You, uh, you look in the right place. I never was so insulted in all my life to think that that woman... Why, Mrs. Willis... How Mr. dare Willis. you allow my first husband's second wife to come here? Oh, I... You know the creature stole him, and yet you had Olga place her in the electric cabinet right next to me. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mrs. Do you Willis. know what she told Olga about me? Oh, I haven't the faintest idea. What was it? Well, I'm too much of a lady to even repeat it. And what's more, I'm leaving here this very instant. Lady, if you do, you'll make the headlines. Oh! Oh! Well, don't forget to slide your eye down my column in the morning for the latest news from Scandal House. So, that headache's gone. On with the mail. Where do you go? Mrs. Stanton Fairchild requests the honor of your company at her snooty bridge tea a week from the day. Oh. I'd like to bow out of that one. I don't like tea and I hate bridge. A fine attitude to take towards your future aunt-in-law. Future aunt-in-law? Don't you think you're taking a lot for granted? Say, listen, if you're not practically engaged to that good-looking nephew of hers, I'll wear a mud pack on my kisser the rest of my days. Oh, I like Dr. Stalin's all right, but... You ought to. 
This place would have gone right on its nose if he hadn't sent you all his Park Avenue friends. Yeah, I guess you're right. And don't think I'm ungrateful. I realize that Herb's the one that made it all possible. And I appreciate it. Well, I suppose you merely admire him. Madly. I don't know. Anyhow, I'm having dinner with him tonight. Yes? Uh, Mr. Milo to see you. She won't talk to anyone else. Won't you sit down, please? She'll be right out. Did you wish to see me? Yes, I thought I might enjoy the relaxation of your treatment. Not that I need to reduce. You're very wise to take care of such a lovely figure. An ounce of prevention is better than pounds of unsightly fat. Yes, I'm out so much in the evening. I think your face treatment would keep my skin toned up and prevent tired lines. You're quite right. Our course is $150. Oh, I'm not interested in the price. All right, Bebe. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you care to start today? Oh, just the facial. Someone's calling for me a little later. Step this way. You wait in the car, baby. You ladies can relax now. I have the situation well in hand. Bessie, take that dog out and tie it up. I quit. I've had enough of this madhouse. You can't quit now, Maud. I've got to take off another 50 pounds. <laughs> she could lose 150 and never miss him. <laughs> She'd have lost a lot more than that if you hadn't stepped in. How can I ever thank you? By marrying me. That's what I came to talk to you about. Why, I never saw you before in my life. Well, that's all right. Now, let's cut out the monkey business and get married. What am I supposed to do? Call a psychopathic war or a cop? Who are you? Oh, I'm just a nobody that got to be a somebody, Helen. Helen? The name is Helene Smith. Oh, I was plain Helen Smith when you were a kid on 10th Avenue. 10th Avenue? How did you know I was from 10th Avenue? She just told me. I did not. Oh, I know 10th Avenue when I hear it. I'm from there myself. Pat Fenton's the name, and you better learn to like it, because you'll be wearing it. I'm not interested you to know, Mr. Fenton, that I'm engaged to Dr. Herbert Stalling. Perhaps you've heard of him. Listen, you, you're not going to marry him. You don't speak his language. 10th Avenue and Park Avenue don't mix. Say, you are crazy. Yeah. I've been crazy ever since I saw you with him at the Ritz the other night. And right then and there, I made up my mind to marry him. So I started checking out. Oh. 
So that's how you found out I was in 10th Avenue. Right. And I sent Ruth Demilo over here so I'd have an excuse to meet you. Oh. I'll tell Mr. Demilo you're here. How do you do? I thought we got rid of you once. I saw Pat Fenton come in here, and where he goes, I go. That guy is news. Who is he, anyhow? My good woman, there should ought to be a law against such profound ignorance. Around these parts, everybody thinks Pat Fenton owns some of our leading racehorses, usually leading by a length, if you know what I mean. Very deep, Terry, but I think I get it. And it's rumored, just rumored, mind you, that Mr. Fenton moves in the highest gambling circles in town. So? And it's also rumored that he's quite a guy with the fair sex, in case you're interested. Which I certainly am not. Hello, dear. Hello, Herbert. You're early. I didn't expect you for an hour. Hello, Terry. How are you, Doc? Well, I thought you might enjoy taking a drive before having dinner. I'd love it. I'll be ready in just a moment. Have you had a hard day? Oh, no. Just the usual routine. I, uh, I have a complaint, Madam Helene. I was here before this other customer, and yet you walked right out on me. Oh, Pat, darling. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I hope I didn't keep you waiting long. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're getting away with anything. Remember, the customer is always right. An old friend? No, but a very fresh one. I suppose all sorts of people come to a place like this. Oh, that's it. One of the baby hippos. I mean, ladies, just fainted. Is it serious? No, well, I'll take care of it. Where is she? Come on. Right in here, Doc. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Poor Mrs. Conway. Is she going to die? No such luck. Last night she had a big time, and today she has a big head. Stop tickling. You'd better call a cab to Mrs. Conway. All right, get her dressed. Yes, ma'am. Is she all right? Yeah, she's all right. Helene, I wish you'd give up this salon. Why, Herb, I have some nice clients. I know, but a place like this is always bound to attract questionable characters, people with whom I don't care to see you associate. Well, I like my work. And besides, it's my livelihood. You needn't be. Why not marry me and let me do the worrying? Your aunt's very ambitious for you, Herbert. She wants you to marry someone out of the top drawer. And Helen Smith, a mere nobody. Nonsense. My aunt admires you for what you've made of yourself, and she'll accept you. And so will all my friends, for your sake, as well as my own. Do you think I could really make you happy? The happiest man in the world. I like you better than anyone I know, Herbert. And I do enjoy being with you. But I'm not sure I love you. If you want me that way. I'll be satisfied. When can I have my aunt announce our engagement? Oh, please, let's, uh, let's wait a little while. I want to be sure. Well, certainly. Oh, by the way, dear, plans were completed today for the new hospital mine darling. Work will start very shortly. Oh, that's wonderful, Herb. Yes, I was thinking it would give you some welfare work to do to occupy your mind after you give up this place. Oh, I'd love to do something like that. Then yeah, let's call it all settled. Oh, please, not now. All right, dear. Take all the time you need. You are, darling. And I'm sure we should be happy. If you don't mind, Herb, I'm desperately tired. I don't feel up to dinner tonight. All right, dear. What you need is rest and a good night's sleep. I'll see you tomorrow. any cards. I brought them in person. How in the world did you get in here? Very simple. When maids are listening, money talks. You have got nerves. Sure. Saint Hart and there took fair jackpot. Well, you can take yourself right out of here. Oh, no. You and I are going places, Duchess. 
Now put on the royal robes and, and don't forget the dandelion. They are lovely. But if I wore them all, I'd look like a walking hot house. Hot or cold, you look swell to me. Now come on. I picked out a nice big doorbell for us to ring. Some other time. I'm tired. I need rest. What you need is a vacation from those two-ton trucks that come into your place for service. Now come on. I'll be a change for you. All my fats are above the ears. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... Now, do I have to carry out or are you going to come peaceably? Did you hear me say I wasn't coming at all? Yes, but I'm not the kind of a guy that believes everything he hears. Now, go on in and get those glad rags on before I slap those pretty little ears down. But I... Uh... Champagne, Louis. The best in the house. You maybe picked your winner today, huh? A pedigree blue blood. Six lengths ahead of the field. Lady Love, shall we smile for you? <laughs> yeah. Now run along, Louis, and hurry up that bubble water. Right away, Mr. Fenton. Right away. Excuse me, Ruth. I'll be right back. Hello, uh... Pat. Hello, George. Uh, how about introducing your friend? Some other time. What's the matter with right now? We're busy and you're tight. Oh, me? <laughs> Say, I was never looser in my life. Now run along, George, and I'll, I'll see you at the office tomorrow morning. Okay. That's the way you feel. Who is that? George Horton. He's my lawyer. George Horton? Why, his wife's a new client of mine. If he's the reason she's trying to get back her appearance, she has my sympathy. That Pat Fenton surely can pick him. Referring to race horses or ladies? Both. But in this case, I mean the magnificent mama he's with now. Common person. Runs a bathhouse or something of that sort. Hey, there's nothing common about her. Except possibly the fella she's with. Well? Here's mud in your eye and happiness in your heart. Thank you. And here's to you. Glad you came? Yes. Perhaps this is just what I needed. You're just what I needed. I've been looking for you all my life. I expected a more original line from you. I'm not giving you a line. But perhaps you'd better throw me one because I've certainly gone overboard for you. I think we'd better dance. All right, but we're only wasting time. We might just as well be rousing up a minister. Can you imagine that? They never even saw it. Love is blind. What man about town is that way about what lovely owner of what well-known emporium for reducing overweight ladies and their fat bankrolls? You're not going to print that. News is news. The doc would be furious. It would ruin everything. So what? Little Helene seems to prefer a guy who packs a rabbit's foot instead of a thermometer. What do you know about it? Get a load for yourself. When do you have all those Park Avenue bells skipping and waddling around your place? You seem to know all the steps. And apparently you know all the answers. I'm cutting in, Pat. Oh, no, you're not. 
That's right. After I dig up all the information about her, you try to keep her secret from me. What's he talking about? I don't pay any attention to him. Now get out before I have you thrown out. Sure. <laughs> Always get someone else to do your dirty work for you. You can't come up. I never want to see you again as long as I live. Certainly I blame you, hiring your lawyer to look me up and then brawling over me in a public place. Listen, Helene, I can explain everything if you just let me come up. Hello? Hello? Who is that? It's Maisie and Polly. Maisie, what's the idea? We came to save you from Matt Lug Fenton. He camped downstairs in the lobby, so we came up the back way. That's him now. Pretend you don't hear him. Open in the name of the law. Get away from that door. I'll call the police. That's a good idea. I know them all by their first names. They might give me a hand. Are you going to get away from here? Not till you tell me you love me. But all is forgiven and I can come back home. Never. Then there's only one thing left for me to do. I'll have to break the door down. Look out. I'm coming through. Haven't you humiliated me enough for one night without causing any more scandal? Okay, honey. You win. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, gorgeous. And remember, I love you. And I hate you, I hate you, I hate you! She hates me. She hates me not. She hates me. She hates me not. She hates me. She hates me not. She hates me. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves you dope. Can't you see Helene's all upset? If she's upset now, wait till she reads my column in the morning. Terry, this is one story you can't print. Dr. Stallings would never forgive me. Neither will that platinum parasite DeMilo. Do you think Pat cares anything about her? What's that for you? Do you hate him? Certainly I hate him. Listen, Terry, if you don't print anything about tonight, I'll give you an exclusive on my engagement to Dr. Stallings within a few days. You're making a mistake, my sweet. An iceberg like Herbie couldn't make anybody happy but an Eskimo. Shut up, you. Doc Stallings is Helene's opportunity to crash Park Avenue where real people live, and he's a gentleman. Sure, and about as exciting as a dummy without a ventriloquist. He'll just pass out from old age, sitting in his easy chair. Yeah, and Pat Fenton will probably die in the chair, too, but they'll have to strap him in first. Stop it, you two. I can't stand anymore. All right, my pretty one. My lips are sealed about you, little escapade tonight, but look. Don't blame me if the other news gougers aren't as kind to you. Come on, crepe hanger. Maybe you can sport another good story for me before the night's over. Gee, thanks, Terry. I'd like to marry a guy like you if he wasn't too much like you. Good night, pal. Good night, Maisie. Well, gal, you're certainly on the tip of everybody's tongue this bright morning. You should get a load of those hens cackling in there. I've seen it. I know it's terrible. I'm so worried about what Herbert's going to think. Yeah, and my Terry's so mad he's fit to be tied. What about? Because I told him I'd have using the story. All the other papers scooped him. Oh, I'm sorry, Maisie. And I suppose those are from the big shop. It's a wonder he didn't send the floral horseshoe with Tommy Pal printed on a ribbon. How about dinner tonight? Yours is possible. George F. Horton attorney. Say, that guy's got more press than a kidney pie. Send them back to Mr. Horton and tell him I don't care to dine with the husband of one of my clients or any other woman's husband. Listen, the quicker you hog tie Doc Stallings and drag him to the altar, the better off you'll be. 
Oh, I can't do that now. It wouldn't be fair to marry Herbert with everybody talking about me. I have an important engagement tonight, Bessie. So make me beautiful. Very beautiful. Oh, my, nothing could make you beautiful. Mm -hmm. What? Well, I, I mean, you're already beautiful. Why, if I was as lovely as you are, I'd be in the movies or something. Huh. Oh, uh, get me the phone, uh, Bessie. Yes, ma'am. Get me Cortland 52311. I said Cortland 52311. Did you hear that? That's my husband's private telephone number. Shh. Yes. No, How are you? Yes, we did have fun last night. No, not tonight. That's why I'm calling you. Oh, I've got a dreadful headache. I'm going to stay home all day and go to bed early. Oh, that'll be all right. Well, bye-bye, George. See you soon. Oh, I think I have a manicure, too, Bessie. Tell Peggy to come in here, will you? If you think you're going to steal my husband right from under my very nose, you're to be. Well, for goodness sake, what's the matter with you? Who are you? I am Mrs. George Horton. Oh, Mrs. Horton. Well, <laughs> how are you, Mrs. Horton? I know your husband. <laughs> that is, I know him in a business way, purely business, of course. I was out with him last night. So, yeah, he's my attorney. Um, you can't fool me with a story like that. Oh, my. I heard you talking to my husband. Oh, Mr. Lane, please come quick with an offer ride going on between Mrs. Horton and Mr. Camino. You've just got to do something. I'm having an awful time out there. My husband has an office in which to conduct business. Ladies, please. Oh, Helene, Mrs. Horton's under the impression that I'm interested in her husband. Isn't that ridiculous? Oh, I'm sure you're mistaken, Mrs. Horton. I happen to know the man who is interested in Mr. Camino. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, everybody knows that Pat Fenton and I are engaged. Then you stick to Pat Fenton and keep away from my husband. I'm sure she will, Mrs. Horton. Come along and finish your treatment. What's the matter? Are you nervous this morning? <sighs> yes, I am. These richly women make me tired. Nothing to do but lie around and eat like pigs and talk, talk, talk about each other. But where I came from, women are busy baking and scrubbing and tending their kids. Or they're out in the field helping their men. They haven't time to talk. It's be a nice place where you come from. Yes, it is. And I'm going to quit and buy me a farm. Oh, well, you can't do that, Maud. After all, Helene sent for you. She needs you. Oh, you know I wouldn't quit. I didn't think you would. I'm an expert masseuse, Madam Helene. Have you got an opening for me? Yes, there's a manhole right outside. Uh-oh, never mind ringing for help. I want to talk to you. I'm a very busy person, Mr. Fenton. If you're waiting for Mr. Milo, you Will you get this into your head? That clothes horse means nothing to me. I'm only interested in thoroughbred. I've been wanting to do that ever since the first time I saw you. I suppose I had it coming to me because I was fool enough to go out with you. But I'll admit I was curious about the so-called man about town who's such a famous ladies' man. You were a very interesting experience, Mr. Fenton. But like all experiences, a thing of the past. With you, I'm a thing of the future. I have something to say about that. husband mixed up innocently in such a mess. Well, I wouldn't trust any man. <laughs> or any woman. Although, I wouldn't have thought Helene. Ow! Be careful, Maud. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just imagine Helene taking up with that cat Fenton and getting mixed up with a showgirl. If you'd stay away from Pat Patton, it wouldn't have happened. Since when, Mr. Milo, have you acquired a monopoly on all the men in town, both married and single? 
Mr. Fenton and I are engaged. Congratulations. Perhaps you'd better tell Mr. Fenton about it. He doesn't seem to know. What does this awful story about my husband mean? Well, I, I, I'm sure I don't know Mrs. Horton. I don't even know him. Hmm. He seems to know you. So you're the woman who's been keeping my husband out at night and trying to make it appear that it was Miss DeMillo. Now you listen to me. Your husband did send me flowers and I sent them right back. And I wouldn't go to dinner with him or any place else if he were the last man on earth. He's nothing but a silly old fool. And the next time I see him, I'll tell him so. I'll see to it that there won't be a next time. Hello? Dr. Stallings, please. Oh? Well, oh, please tell him that Madame Helene called, and I'd like to see him this afternoon. Thank you. Pardon me, but will my wife be out soon? Any minute now, Mr. Higginbottom. Thank you. Andy! How do I look? Immense, darling, immense. Oh, I'm so thrilled. I'm down to 285 pounds. Isn't it wonderful? If we get any more strange animals around here, I'm going to start setting traps. What now? Mrs. Gerard just showed up with a monkey. She says if Renault can bring her dog, she isn't going to leave little Jocko home. A monkey, huh? Well, she certainly brought him to the right place. You stay here like a good little boy and be as quiet as a mouse and don't you dare leave this table. Bessie, will you please get me a glass of water? My head's splitting. In a moment, ma'am. It would be a nice change for you. What do you mean, a nice change? Oh, oh, Bessie. Here's my glass of water. Oh, Bessie, my head's pounding enough without you pounding it. Oh, oh what's the matter? No monkey can do that to me. Oh, I didn't do anything, ma'am. Oh, not you. There's a monkey in my hair. Oh, you're just seeing things, ma'am. It's your condition. I tell you, I did see a monkey in my hair. Well, there's no monkey there now. I had an uncle once used to see pink elephants and purple giraffes, but a monkey. And that's a new one on me. I think you'd better come and have a sweat in the electric cabinet. Well, please, you come along. So. When I run a scale, I can reach high C again. Hmm. Maud, what cold hands you have. Ow! Is 
husband ever found out I got to a point where I could see monkeys, I'd never hear the end of it. Chili, I have a feeling I'm not alone in here. Please tell Miss Helene that I'm here. Just a moment, Dr. Stallings. I'll tell her. Thank you. Madam Helene, Dr. Stallings to see you. Hello, Herbert. I'm glad you're here. I suppose you saw the papers. Yes, I saw them. You don't seem to be very angry. Would you expect me to be? It wasn't altogether my fault. You don't have to explain anything. But other people aren't equally broad-minded. I suppose your aunt's furious. She was displeased. Scandal chatter like that is always distasteful. Then perhaps we'd better forget the talk we had yesterday. You mean about announcing our engagement? Yes. I don't want to forget it. Do you? No. Then let's put an end to all this unpleasant gossip. And we'll be married as soon as you dispose of this place. I suppose that would be best. Now you're being sensible. And I'll do everything in my power to make you happy. Hold everything. Am I intruding, I hope? You most certainly are. Get out. I didn't think you'd have the nerve to come here again. I presume this is the gentleman who, according to one of our leading columnists, comes here to study bad facts. But why not? You doctors aren't the only ones interested in anatomy. Come on, I'm taking you to dinner. Oh, no, Mr. Fenton, you're a trifle late. Miss Helene has just agreed to become my wife. Is this on the level? Certainly. I'm not going to let you marry this guy. You don't love him, do you? Well, do you? Uh, we... we understand each other. That's not enough. That'll be plenty from you, Fenton. Now, please be gentleman enough to leave. Look here, Doc. I'm crazy about this girl, too. And I'm not letting her crack up her life by marrying somebody she doesn't give a steam-heated hoot about. It might be a good idea, Fenton, if Helene were allowed to decide that for herself. Pat, won't you please go? Please. Okay. Hello? It's the hospital for you, Doctor. Thank you. Dr. Stalling speaking. I'll be there immediately. I have to go, dear. It's an emergency case. I'll pick you up later at your apartment. I understand it. Oh, hello. Fancy meeting you here, as they say, on Park Avenue. Get away from me before I start using 10th Avenue language on you. There ought to be a law against men like you. Well, if there isn't, I'll have one pass for you. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you, gorgeous. Officer. Hey, what's wrong, lady? This man. Well, he looks all right to me. He's following me. Oh, so he's a masher, eh? The officer, uh, you're a married man, aren't you? Yeah, sure. What's it to you? Well, would you let your wife elope with another guy? Oh, I see. So that's it. Now, see here, lady. But you I'm know, not that's married to him. Uh, oh, don't you believe her, officer? She fell for this other guy just because he's got a bigger car than me. Oh, <laughs> no, that's the modern woman for you. I leave it to all of you. Is that any way to treat a man just because he's out of a job? Don't let her get away with it, buddy. I lost my wife the same way. You mind your own business. Hey, yeah, yeah, you better take it easy. She's got a bad temper. Oh, I don't know why I love her the way I do. All right, get along with you before I run you in. Don't you see her stopping traffic? She stops traffic wherever she goes. She's so beautiful. All right, well, get along with you then. Okay, officer. There you are. Go buy yourself a new cab. This one squeaks. Well, come on. This is where you get out, too. Why? Why, this is where I live. And you're coming up with me so we can talk without being disturbed. Oh, no, I'm not. This is the end of the line for me. Lady, do you see that great big policeman over there? Well, he's a friend of mine. And all I've got to do is tell him that you tried to pick my pocket, and you'll be in the Hoosgow in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Pat Fenton, you wouldn't dare. Oh, is that so? Hey, Dugan. All right, I'll go with you. Yes, Mr. Fenton. Oh, uh, Dugan, uh, have a cigar. Thanks. I'll have one tonight after me corned beef and cabbage. Would you like to make five dollars in five minutes? Say, hey, I'll work for a dollar a minute any time. In advance. You don't mind, do you? Okay. What do you want me to do? Just go up to Mr. Fenton's apartment. There's something I want you to tell him. You give me the words, lady. I'll say them. There's no use wasting any more breath arguing. I'm going to marry Dr. Stallings, and that's that. And spend the rest of your life juggling teacups, waiting for him to come home when he's hours late, going screwy with loneliness? No. No, you're not the type. I'm going to help my husband in his hospital work. It had never worked. You and I are from the same alley. You're my kind, and I'm yours. I'm going to have ancestors in my family if I have to marry to get them. Oh, so that's what's got you, huh? Look, the only difference is, Doc Stallings is from a long line of blue bloods, while you and I, <laughs> well, we're just from a long line of red undershirts. But don't you see, Pat? Dr. Stallings can give me everything you can, security, position, and the respect that goes with it. Yeah. Everything but the one thing that'll make a woman like you happy. With you, I'd never know anything but uncertainty. Behind a chauffeur in uniform one day, and behind the eight ball the next. That's where you're wrong. Oh, no, I'm not wrong. I know your type. Helen, just to show you how serious I am about you, I, well, I got rid of my racing stables and all my other interests. Practically gave them away. Pat, you didn't. Yes. And I was so sure that you'd see things my way that I, well, I got something for us. Two tickets to Florida. Darling, we'll spend that honeymoon in, in Palm Beach or any other place in the world your little heart desires, as long as the bankroll holds out. Then we'll come home and I'll spit on my hands and make an honest living for the both of us. But the doctor... He's only in love with his work. While I... I'm only in love with you. Oh, Pat, I don't know what to do. I do. Come in. Mr. Nilo sent me up here for bags, Mr. Fenton. What bags? Well, uh, she said they were in the closet. You'd know. Say, what is this? Well, I don't know, sir. She just told me to come up here and get her bags for her. You can give her these, too. Why, you little fool, are you going to fall for a cheap frame like that? How does a fool ever listen to you? Say, where's the woman who sent you up here? She was downstairs in the lobby, sir. Yeah? Well, I'll gamble she's not there now. Oh, it's okay. She's already tipped me. Yeah? How much? Five bucks. Five bucks for a cheap frame up like that? She got a bargain. Oh, cross my heart, Mr. Fenton. I didn't know it was a frame. Yeah. Listen. Uh... I was just going up to see Fenton, but I'd much rather see you instead. Mr. Horton, would you please drive me home? Will I? And how? <laughs> Let's say to a little drink and a bite to eat. Didn't you get my message about not going out with married men? <laughs> sure, but I knew you were only kidding. I also told your wife to tell you you were a silly old fool. Oh, here now, wait a minute. Well, if you weren't, you wouldn't be running around getting your name in gossip columns. <laughs> You're a fine one to preach. You furnish some pretty hot news yourself. You know, I can't help wondering why your wife is so fond of you. Oh, she appreciates me. Besides, I'm still fond of the old girl. Well, then why don't you try showing it? Well, the trouble is, she's allowed herself to go to sleep. Well, if you have any idea of stepping out with me, you might as well forget it. Now, listen, don't forget you invited yourself in here. My mistake. And I'm inviting myself right out. Oh, no, baby. You'd better call an ambulance. Would you please open that door and help me get her out?
Take it easy, gal. You're in your own little bunk. And nothing broken except maybe your engagement. If they're having an x-ray made of it, we'll know as soon as the doc gets back. Oh, my head feels as if it would explode. It probably will when you get a load of the morning news. Is there anything left of my reputation? Even less than there is of Horton's hair. A million men in New York, and you had to choose that lug for a joyride. Was he hurt? Not even a scratch on that thick hide of his. I suppose Herbert's serious. Maybe yes, maybe no. Only time will tell. He spent most of the night hovering over your bed. He'll be back any minute. Yes, and I'll bet his Aunt Elizabeth will climb his frame. And what'll Mrs. Horton do to Georgie for you? Well, I've got to get down to shop. Now, so Doc says the word, baby. But I've got to see Mrs. Horton and make her understand it was a mistake. And what a mistake. If she's going to do that sort of thing, at least she ought to leave the husband of her clients alone. If it hadn't been for the accident, we might never have known what she was doing. I suppose they were drinking like fish. Oh, dear. There's so many who simply can't trust. If she realized that we married women in Georgia to keep our husbands, maybe she'd keep away from them. Oh, not her. She even tried to grab Mr. Fenton, my boyfriend. I'll fix her. Oh. Good morning, dear. How is your husband? I don't know. I haven't seen him. We're all so sorry to hear about his accident. Bessie, is Madame Helene here? No, ma'am. She's home in bed. She had an accident, didn't you know? What's her home phone number? Oh, I can't tell you, ma'am. It's against the rules. I'd see her if I were you, Mrs. Horton, and tell her a thing or two. Bessie, you get Madame Helene on the phone. Yes, ma'am. You know, she's just staying away to avoid seeing you, Mrs. Horton. Never mind, I'll take it. Hello? Yeah. Madam Helene, this is Bessie. I'm awfully sorry about your accident. Yes. Oh, hello, matey. Say, the ladies are here and they're saying, I mean, Mrs. Horton, she's awfully upset. I get it. I'll be right down. The cackling chorus has started. I better get down there. Where do you think you're going? To face the music. Get my clothes. Fools torn in where angels fear to tread. Yes, Good morning, Elaine. How could you do a thing like that? Now, now, Mrs. Horton, it's not as bad as all that. Come into my office and I'll explain just what happened. You mean you met my husband by accident? Of course, Mrs. Horton. You see, in order to evade Pat Benton, there was nothing for me to do except get in your husband's car and ask him to drive me home. Elaine is in there now trying to pull the wool over the old fool's eyes. I'll bet ten to one she gets away with it. She won't get away with it. I'll think of that. So you see, Mrs. Horton, neither your husband nor myself was responsible for what happened. You do understand, don't you? Why don't you go into one of the treatment rooms and relax for a little? You're so upset. I'm so bewildered that I can't understand anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bessie, take Mrs. Horton into one of the treatment rooms and see that she's not disturbed. Yes, ma'am. Come this way, Mrs. Horton. Bessie, are you married? No, ma'am. Nobody ever asked me. It's wonderful when your husband loves you. What must be? For me, I've got nothing on my mind but women in hair all day. Is that the canary to go home tonight? Gets pretty lonesome. Yes, I suppose so. But it does have its advantages. Let you know something? What? I'm going to let you dye my hair. I've been thinking about it for years. Oh, Madame Helene always advises against it. She says women should grow gracefully. What come? I'm going to leave that to your judgment. Is this kind of a nice number? Reddish brown looks well on you. All right, Bessie. That would be nice. Oh, my, we're all out of town. Excuse me just a moment, Mrs. Horton. Certainly. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? Can you imagine that old fool, Mrs. Horton, thinking she can keep her husband? And of course, she couldn't get married again. Nobody would even look at her. Helene probably told her a pack of lies about what happened, and most likely Mrs. Horton believed her. Must be awful to have your home broken up at her age. Oh, she's all washed up as far as her husband's concerned. <laughs>
Can you imagine that old fool, Mrs. Horton, thinking she can keep her husband? It must be awful to have your home broken up at her age. And of course, she couldn't get married again. Nobody even looked at her. Helene probably told her a pack of lies about what happened, and most likely Horton believed her. She's washed up as far as her husband's concerned. You've dropped away behind the time. You've let yourself go to sea. Can you imagine that old fool, Mrs. Horton, thinking she can keep her husband? Helene probably told her a pack of lies about what happened. Nobody even looked at her. Horton believed her. Oh, let her wait. I have an important engagement. I'm sorry, I just can't. No, oh, I should wait till he's old, Amy. I think you better try and locate her husband. How is she? Hello, Pat. This is Helene. Oh, hello. How are you feeling? I read what happened. You had a narrow escape, didn't you? Oh, I'm all right, Pat. Listen, I want you to get in touch with Mr. Horton right away. Mrs. Horton's taken poison. And I want you to get him down here before she... Oh, gee, that's tough. Yeah, I think I know I can get a hold of him. I'll have him down there in no time. Poor soul. I understand how she felt with that pack of hyenas yapping at her. Yeah, and just say the word and I'll clip Emilio's tongue. Why we got her handy? Oh, thanks, Ted. Oh, what can she expect? Mr. Horton's here. Oh, please have him come in. Mr. Horton. Helene of causing Mrs. Horton to take poison. Say that again. Camila knows she can't get away with it, but she's going to try it just to keep her away from you. Oh, I get it. She wasn't satisfied with framing me. Now she's going after Helene. Well, what are you going to do about it? I know what I'd do. Louise. George. Bessie, you can tell those so-called ladies that Mrs. Horton's going to be all right. Oh, isn't it wonderful? That hair dye turned into a rainbow. Mrs. Horton's all hunky story again. Oh, well, that's bad. What I saw. Never mind what you saw. Come on, girls. Just call for a drink to celebrate Mrs. Horton's recovery. Let's Come on. Have you heard the good news? Mrs. Horton's going to be all right. 
Oh, Pat, darling, I didn't know you were here. You're just in time to take me home. Don't darling me after what you tried to pull. Now, quit dealing from the bottom of the deck and tell these people Helene had nothing to do with Mrs. Horton's taking poison. Why, Pat, dear, I... It's only because I love you and I couldn't stand to see Helene come between us. There's nothing between you and me and you know it. So what? So you better get out before I lose my temper. Okay. I'll leave you to your bathhouse, flunky. glad that it turned out all right for you. We know how worried you were. Yes, we were all pulling for you and poor Mrs. Horton. She's such a sweet soul. My dear, you were very lucky to get out of this after trying to drive poor Mrs. Horton to do away with herself. That's what I say, too. You malicious hypocrite. So that's what you think. All right, you asked for it, and here it is. That poor woman was completely satisfied when I told her the truth about last night. I told her her husband still cared for her. He told me so himself. And it made her happier than she'd been in months. And then when she was sitting alone in that room, she overheard every word of your cruel, malicious gossip. And it broke her heart. You're the ones that are lucky that she didn't die. Because you'd have been just as responsible for her death as if you'd stabbed her in the back with a knife. And I wanted to be a part of the upper crust of society, which some of you ladies represent. Well, my eyes are open. I wouldn't have any part of you now. I know you for what you are. Evil-minded, gossip-hungry, scandal-thirsty, destroying each other with your spite and backbiting. And I wanted to help you build up the bodies you'd allowed to become fat and ugly. Well, I'm through, washed up. Beginning today, this place is under new management. And my partner can take it over. She can run it if her stomach's strong enough to stand any more of you. It's all yours, Maisie, if you want it. From now on, you can run this scandal house. Why, I was never more insulted in all my life. Did you ever hear of such impudence? Oh, don't let's kid ourselves, girls. We'll all be back tomorrow. I love this what a story. I remember every word she said. If this place ever closed, you'd marry me. Well, it's closed for the day while we go to the marriage license bureau. Huh? Herbert, it's no use. I told you you'd never know when I was going to blow up. And if we were married, I'd be sure to pop off unexpectedly and disgrace you. What's all this leading up to? Is it Fenton? Yes, Herbert. Let's call it all off. All right, dear. That's the way you want it. But I want you to know that I think that I think you're terrific. And I think you're the grandest person I've ever known. And thanks again for pulling this important through. Where's Helene? Uh, I wouldn't go in there if I were you. Why not? I, I gotta get a statement from her for my story. Another fellow's already getting a statement. Well, I can just make Santa Anita in time for that last race tomorrow. So long, fella, and good luck to you and Maisie. Well, Where's Pat? Just left. Gone with the wind, my gal. The good old California. Eh? California. No. You can't leave me like this. You love me. I can prove it. Not after what I just saw. Officer? Uh, Officer, this woman is following me. Oh, 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 so it's you again, eh? Officer, you're a married man. What would you do if your husband was running away just because you were out of a job? Out of a job. You know, I think the two of you are out of a goofy house by mistake. Now, go on. Move on. Don't you see you're blocking traffic here? Oh, he always blocks traffic. He's so handsome. You know, you look to me like the kind of a wife who don't give her man no affection. Now, why don't you try giving him a good rose and kiss? Woof! <laughs> Officer, I think you've got something there. You see, that's a, a natural born diplomat. That's me. Preventing divorces all on the pay of a cop. <laughs> I guess that'll hold you for a while. Darling, that'll hold me for the rest of your life. 